The Super Nintendo has an abundance of platforming games to choose from. Some of them panned out, some of them not so much. From licensed games to brand new mascots, here are the top 10 best Super Nintendo platformers. We'll be picking one game per franchise, otherwise we could end up with every single Donkey Kong Country game on here. Number 10, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. The original Ghouls and Ghosts was an arcade classic while Genesis owners got a great port of the arcade release. Super Nintendo owners got an entirely new platformer. Arthur is back, sent out to save the princess yet again, so it's up to him running around in his underpants to save her. You start off with a suit of armor and have various upgrades that you can pick up that alter your weapon or charge your weapon up. You can also pick up different weapons like a dagger, a scythe, an axe, a bow, or even a torch. For me, the dagger is the best weapon in the game. One new improvement in Super Ghouls and Ghosts is that Arthur now has the ability to do a double jump. They can be pretty difficult to execute since you can't alter the direction mid-air. I couldn't tell you how many times I died from double jumping right in front of an enemy. Super Ghouls and Ghosts is also incredibly tough and can be hard to pick up if you're new to the platforming genre as a whole. Get ready, because in order to get the true ending, you're gonna have to complete the game twice. Yikes. Super Ghouls and Ghosts looks fantastic. There's so much detail in each of the sprites, and the Mode 7 is used well with the rotating platforms and some of the bosses. The sound designers really did a great job in capturing the spooky atmosphere and displaying it in Super Ghouls and Ghosts. One other issue with the game is the slowdown, and I really mean slowdown. Like, picture a turtle running a 100 meter dash slow. If you're up for a challenge and don't mind the slowdown, give Super Ghouls and Ghosts a go. Number 9, Demon's Crest. Is this deja vu? I thought we just talked about the Red Devil in Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Take the Red Devil from Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and why not give Firebrand its own game? So the control system is way ahead of what was in Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Firebrand can fly midair, grab onto ledges, and use a variety of attacks or special moves. Firebrand can also use his shoulder to break things in the background, I mean, how cool is that? You can also pick up items that allow Firebrand to transform into a way more powerful demon that can do all sorts of cool stuff like jump higher, cut away at vines, swing, even reducing the amount of damage you take from enemies. The one downfall of Demon's Crest is that it's a little on the short side having only 7 stages, but that's a bit misleading as there are tons of secrets to find and hidden branches that lead to alternative bosses. You can also take these stages in any order, but be prepared to switch between forms quite often in order to progress. Demon's Crest is a rather dark game that didn't fare well back when it was first released, like the other colorful platformers Nintendo was releasing at the time. Don't overlook the excellent Demon's Crest. Number 8. Clock. Clock goes around from level to level looking for his flag, but seems to keep finding an article of clothing hanging from the flagpoles. He then finds out it was taken from a race of fleas. The game breaks out into platforming stages where you can shoot your limbs out as weapons to have them return almost like a boomerang. I thought this was incredibly unique since most platformers either jump on the heads of bad guys or just shoot out a weapon. Clock also breaks out into stages where you have to hunt down fleas in order to complete a stage. Along the way, you can pick up different power-ups that change Clock into different forms. The soundtrack in Plock is the cream of the crop on the Super Nintendo. It was done by Tim and Jeff Fallen and is one of the best of the best in regards to Super Nintendo soundtracks. I covered Plock in a separate review if you're more interested in how great of a hidden gem Plock is. It's disappointing that Plock didn't sell well back in the day, and if you're seeing Plock for the first time, give it a go any way possible. Number 7, Axe Razor. Think about Axe Razor as if you threw SimCity and Castlevania into a blender and let it rip. You get to control the god who can control the weather, plow through forests using a fire, and expand the town's population by taking out enemies by shooting arrows at the monsters until you seal their lair. Each section leads to a platforming section where you can play through the level while using magic and going toe to toe with some of the best bosses on the Super Nintendo. The graphics are top notch, especially in the platforming sections. The sprites are massive and there's no noticeable slowdown anywhere to be found. One really cool aspect of Actraiser is after you beat it once, you will unlock the platforming only professional mode that bumps up the health to max, you'll take double damage against enemies, and lose the magic abilities. The music was composed by the legendary producer who made the Streets of Rage games. I feel that Actraiser could be very well his best work on any console. It's got a mix of mellow and urgency in all the tracks. Even today Actraiser controls like a dream. It's truly an amazing game that I covered in the past, I hope you give it a chance. Number 6, Kirby Superstar. If I told you that a game with 8 actual 
actual games in one, you'd think that's quite a deal, right? If I then told you that this was a Kirby game, you'd probably tell me that Kirby games are aimed towards kids and it shouldn't be on this list, but Kirby Superstar is the go-to Kirby game on the Super Nintendo. You get to pick from a remake of Kirby's Dream Land, a new platforming game, a one-on-one -on -one racing game against King DDD, a cave exploration game, a time attack rush mode, a boss run, and a large platforming game that Kirby can switch between powers. Kirby Superstar was also pretty innovative with the introduction of hats to distinguish each ability. It was also the first time the abilities had multiple actions like walking, dashing, or even a charge shot. The soundtrack is absolutely incredible and there's a ton of meat on the bones here in Kirby Superstar. You can find it almost everywhere, including the Nintendo Switch Online. Number 5, Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island takes everything that was great about Super Mario World and, well, throws it down the drain. Instead of making Mario the main character, Yoshi is now the main character with Baby Mario now taking a backseat. But let's give Yoshi's Island a pass since it's a fantastic game. Yoshi uses the eggs that it picks up along the way by digesting enemies to shoot at them that try to poach Baby Mario away when running out of time after Yoshi takes a hit. Along the way, Yoshi has a ton of different power-ups that can change Yoshi into an airplane, a submarine, a car, and many others. The multicolored art style is simply wonderful. With multi-layered backgrounds and parallax scrolling, I seriously wish every Super Nintendo game had graphics this good. There's also some clever use of the Mode 7 graphics in some of the sprites and boss battles. The music in Yoshi's Island is fantastic, especially the final boss theme that smacks you in the face with a heavy metal riff. With its distinct crayon-drawn graphics and puzzle-solving elements and item collecting, Yoshi's Island is simply a work of art meant to be experienced. Yes, it's not a true sequel to Super Mario World, but can be regarded as a great game that simply shines among the rest. Number 4, Mega Man X2. Mega Man X2 is bigger, badder, and better than the original Mega Man X. For starters, it's much harder than the original Mega Man X. You can also now do a mid-air dash, and that was really neat. Speeding up the gameplay just so much in the process, X can also do a new upgraded charge attack that was just so rewarding to fire two charged attacks. The biggest improvement in Mega Man X2 is in the hardware. It uses the CX4 chip to do some really cool wireframe effects. X2 also focuses around the platforming rather than the action, which is a positive, since this review is built around platforming games. Some of the bosses are incredibly aggressive, and have random patterns for you to deal with. This was clearly a step in the right direction since the bosses in Mega Man X were mainly pushovers for the most part. The music in X2 is a step down from the first game, but overall significantly better than other platformers on the Super Nintendo. Mega Man X2 takes everything that was great in the original X game and improves on it in almost every aspect. Number 3, Super Castlevania 4. Super Castlevania 4 is all about the presentation. It sets the mood the moment the fog disappears and Belmont is standing in front of the castle he's about to take on and anything in his way. Every level just looks so good and plays extremely different from one another, keeping every aspect of the gameplay feeling as fresh as a homemade burger right off the grill. Onto the difficulty, I'm in the camp where Super Castlevania 4 is very unique in terms of challenge. With enough practice, you can get good at it in order to zip through all the levels. The music in Super Castlevania 4 is like straight up something you would want to put on an iPod and listen to it on the go. Or you could just get a Spotify account, I mean, who even listens to iPods anymore? Super Castlevania 4 is one of the first games I reviewed, and I can only go back to that video and smile with how far I've grown as some random guy on the internet who reviews games. Number 2, Donkey Kong Country 2. Donkey Kong Country 2 could very well be the greatest platformer of all time. It was definitely a close one for me. Seeing that opening menu screen gives me chills to this day. Don't get me wrong, the first Donkey Kong Country game is still a great one, but it had its flaws. Where Donkey Kong was pretty much useless if you had the faster Diddy, Dixie Kong now gives you a better variety with her flying ability. The animal power-ups in Donkey Kong Country 2 were much better than the ones in the original game. For starters, the rhino can now charge up, the snake can jump even higher than the frog, to the spider that can let you build and climb platforms. Tons of the levels in Diddy's Conquest now run vertically, which improves the format of the Donkey Kong Country game significantly. You'll also need to find the items in the game that do all kinds of stuff, like unlock new areas on the map or save your progress, so locating them doesn't feel like a chore but much more of a conquest. The best Donkey Kong Country game on the Super Nintendo is Diddy's Conquest bar none. It takes everything the first game did and amplified it to the extreme. Number 1, Super Mario World. What's there to really say about Super Mario? World, except it's not only the best platformer on the Super Nintendo, but the best platformer of all time. 
Don't believe me? It's got unforgettable levels, a soundtrack designed for the masses, and platforming perfected controls. Think about the leap from Super Mario Bros. 3 to Super Mario World. I mean, Super Mario World has 96 exits that you can go through and explore. Super Mario World is in a tier of its own against all other platformers on the Super Nintendo, and that's saying something considering it's a launch title that they would just give away when you brought the damn thing home from the store. Super Mario World also brings you new items, like the ability to fly with a feather, the different colored Yoshis that each bring you different powers every time you pick up a shell, to the multiple ways you can complete a stage indicated by the red colored dot on the overworld map. The music blew my mind the first time I heard the orchestra sounds in Super Mario World. To this day, I'll randomly catch myself humming the underwater theme. What I like most about Super Mario World is the multiple ways you can finish the game. You can skip right through to the end by going to the Star World or carefully exploring all 96 exits or do a bit of both and take any path you want. Super Mario World is a timeless classic and I have so many good memories opening that Super Nintendo box on Christmas of 1991 and not turning that system off taking turns in the two-player mode with my brother until the wee hours of the night. I'm the Retro Kingpin, thanks for watching. <laughs>